All are equal before death. No matter your wealth, intelligence, or percentage average game completion rate, we will all die. These are the terms of the contract we will have signed with death on that fateful day of birth. Life started, a life destined to be concluded. Humans throughout history have attempted to cheat this contract. Ancient Chinese emperors seek the elixirs of immortality. Medieval alchemists seek to make philosopher's stones. Indeed, even today, we seek technologies such as cryogenics and mind uploading to attempt to cheat death. But I am a lemon king, and I live in a universe confined within a form. In this dimension, history begins in 1444, and the world ends in 1821, destined forever to repeat in this cycle, never to escape. But this reality in itself offers hope. For I do not need permanent mortality. I merely need to live until the universe itself ends. And with that, I have a date, 1821. With life itself also beginning in 1444, that means I only need to survive on average for 377 years. Since my average life expectancy at birth is only 50.4 years, that means to get to live to 377 on average, I need to get average monarch lifespan to 748.01%. Okay, I'm not getting there, but let's see how far I can get there in standard setup, achievement compatible, I'm at compatible game. So before we do begin, today we actually have quite a lot to cover in the disclaimer section. And before we do get into those, a like would be appreciated if you haven't already, and a subscription would be amazing. I recently discovered that Playmaker has a bigger number next to his name, and I would like to fix that. With that said, let's start the disclaimers with a big thing right out of the gate. In custom nation setup mode, you can give yourself the immortal trait. That achieves the goals of this video immediately. Obviously, I'm not doing that, but it's worth mentioning. Now, there are other things that can increase your death rate, most notably becoming a general and fighting battles, so we're also not going to be becoming a general or doing anything that would actually make us more likely to die. With that said, how does death actually work? Well, every single day in E4, you have a chance of death. This is given by a fancy-looking equation where A is first multiplied by M, and then all of that is divided by 182,500. That gives you daily chance of death. So M is quite simple, it can be modded, but in our case it's 4 by default. So to make the chance of death A divided by 45,625. I don't know why death operates on a 45,625 base system. The best I could see is that 45,625 divided by 365 is 125. And remember, E4 has no leap years, so that is exactly 125 years. Anyway, what is the A value in the above equation? While well, it's a factor for your age, the older you get, the larger this number becomes. It starts at 1, so you have a total of a 0.8% chance of death every year from 0 to 40. That then goes to 2 between 40 and 50, 4 between 51 and 60, and that keeps going until you are 91 and older, at which point it hits 1,000, and you have a total of 1,000 out of 45,625 chance of death every day, or a 2.2% chance of death each day. This is where the fun math begins. Technically, we can make a save every single day, and if we die, come back the previous day, we are alive. Since the chance of death is the same, regardless if we are 150 or 92 years old, we don't actually get more likely to die as this method continues. With this method, however, we do run to a really fun issue. See, we can cheat death in this turn, but is this life worth living? See, let's assume we've gotten to a 91-year-old ruler convention, our starting point. This gives us 286 years, or 104,390 days to survive while autofloring or burning. Of those days, we will die on average 2,288 times, meaning we will live on 102,102 days. Furthermore, on those 2,288 days we burn, on 51 of those days from 2,288, we will actually roll a cosmic map one yet again and die twice. We will statistically on average need to burn three times the same day once coming to a total of 2,340 Alt-F4 resets we'll have to perform. Now, assuming we can hit Control s wait for the game to finish saving, hit space, go forward one day, and hit space again every two seconds. Further, bearing in mind this will include month ticks, which will take longer than two seconds on average, we will need to spend 204,204 seconds on the time we're not alt f 4 the game. That assumes we are doing literally nothing else in E4, just optimized everything and just trying to not die. Then let's assume each time we do die, we need to Alt F4, launch E4, launch the save, and get back into the game ready to go. On a good day, assuming a really good PC, optimal setup, and nothing else running, I think it's doable within 30 seconds. So we will need another 70,200 seconds worth of burning down. Overall, that comes to 274,404 seconds, or 4,573 minutes, or 76 hours, 
for 3.17 days straight, sitting there burning super optimally and taking up a one day at a time, assuming super perfect loading and process. So is it doable? Yes. Is this a life worth living? Uh, no. At the very least, I would need a couple weeks worth of therapy if I were to attempt such a thing. And at that point, I'd rather make it modified tier list. So with that all said, let's finally open E4 and see how much maximum monarch lifespan we can actually get to. And for this round, we'll need to begin as Venice. But before we do get into Venice, there is something I want to talk about regarding this round that I found that I thought was quite cool. And it involves the Ottomans, everyone's favourite country. See, the Ottomans have a bunch of fancy disasters they get into with domination. No one's actually observed those disasters in practice, because if you play the Ottomans, you can kind of finish your conquest by 1550, meaning you don't get late enough into the game to actually encounter those disasters. But in the event that you decide to keep going and you actually do encounter your Ottoman unique disasters, one of the disasters you can run into is basically the harem just kind of taking over the country from you. Relatively cool disaster. Honestly, out of all the Ottoman disasters, that one isn't that bad. However, one of the cool things that can happen within that disaster is you can rein in your harem. And the reason that's cool is that a lot of disasters, you can kind of gain a temporary modifier that lasts until the end of your disaster that can offset some of the debuffs of the disaster. And this disaster has no exception, that when you rein in your harem, you can get a modifier for average monarch lifespan until the death of your current ruler. What's unique about that one is, unlike other disasters, this modifier lasts until the end of your current ruler. Meaning that if you then end the disaster, which includes a decrease to your average monarch lifespan, you actually walk out of that disaster with more average monarch lifespan than you started, namely from the modifier, which lasts until the end of your ruler. And since we're stacking average monarch lifespan here, a modifier that lasts until the end, end of your ruler's like natural life, assuming that we're going to live forever, is kind of a permanent modifier, so could potentially worth including. However, the Ottomans are an end tag, so there's just a better end tag that has a more average amount of lifespan than the Ottomans. So can't really include them into any of these runs. I just thought it'd be cool to mention because there's very few like other disaster modifiers that you can gain that give you like a buff mid-disaster to cancel out a disaster debuff that you actually get to keep outside of the disaster ending. So I thought that was cool. Anyway, you want to start as Venice. And the reason you're starting as Venice is this mission here, Plague Doctor Training. Now, you need to actually look into the game files to figure out what this mission does. The custom tooltip description of our advanced medicine will come, uh, will ensure that our heads of state will enjoy a longer lifespan. It is technically true in this case, and I guess even useful, but it doesn't tell you what the modifier actually gives. It's 25% average monarch lifespan. And you also decrease the frequency that you're going to be stuck with plague events. It just basically adds an increase to the timer of those plague events if you've completed the flag from this mission. Again, at least this description is at least somewhat useful, but honestly... I have to say, whoever made the Venice missions, I appreciate what you were going for, but like, Event Insight, the event will paint the story of Tiziano, Venice's most celebrated artist during the Renaissance. What what modifiers does this give me? What does this do? Like, like what, what am I meant to do with this information? I'm going to get an event called Venice's Renaissance Champion. Okay. And the Event Insight is that I'm going to learn about Venice's Renaissance Champion. But th th this is like reading someone's code, and then you come across like a section in the code which say where we're multiplying A and B together. And the code comment says, here, we multiply A and B. It, it doesn't tell me why we're multiplying A and B. Like, what am I meant to do with this information? Well, what does this event insight actually help me in my run? Does, does this give me institution embracement cost or power cost? Or idea cost reduction? The 20 discipline? I, anyway, sorry, completely a random tangent. Um, you can really tell that a lot of the missions now, because they tend to be made by different people, both the power levels between them are quite different, and especially the event insights being written by these. Um, let's just say some of them are very single-player oriented. And even in those cases, like, again, what, 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 what do I do with this? The, the event will increase the Republican tradition and allow administration advice to generate spender. How much spender? Like, compare this event insight to, for example, this English mission here, A House Divided, where we get some parliament debate back in chance, some parliament chance of decision, and we also get an event insight that every estate will no longer raise any rebels when their land gets seized if their loyalty drops below 30. Incredibly helpful. Um, gets straight to the point, tells me everything I need to know, there's no excessive greed things. It just tells me that, yep, every estate, a neutral thing is yellow, uh, will no longer raise any rebels when their land gets seized if their loyalty drops below 30. A relatively complicated concept, explained very simply and straight to the point. What a beautiful event insight. Like, I really can't complain. Meanwhile, this event will expand the church in Venice. What do you mean expand the church? Does this, does this grant me like a church too? Does this give me a cathedral early? Does this give me a promise modifier saying plus 25% tax? What do you mean expand the church? And it gives us a supplementary reward. What reward? Based on our diplomatic stance against the Pope? What do you mean by diplomatic stance against the Pope? Like, are we allied with the Pope? 
Is this the diplomatic stance referring to this setting here for the managed attitude, like if we're threatened or hostile or neutral towards the Pope? Uh, is this literally if we're excommunicated or not? If we're, does it check if we're rivaled? What, 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 what do I do with this information, right? Like, just... Anyway, before I keep going about this weird complaint of mine, and this ends up decreasing my real life, natural lifespan, uh, let's continue with the rest of the run. Where were we? Oh, yes, modify stacking average monarch lifespan, right. Well, I do also have to mention one of the reasons I also tabbed over to England, is technically you can form England to get the mission dynasty secured for average monarch lifespan 25% for 25 years. Issue is, it's kind of temporary and it doesn't, you know, make us live forever, so hence um, I'm not going to be including this run. We kind of need to stack permanent modifiers here. Temporary modifiers will just run out before we get to use them, unfortunately. Anyway, after we've got the 25% from Venice, we need to go ahead and form Jerusalem. In this case, I'm going to tag into Cyprus because they also have the thing we need from Jerusalem, the Crusader missions. More specifically, we need to locate the Fountain of Youth, which is going to give us 15% average amount of lifespan until the end of the game. Finally, go ahead and conquer the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus and build that to level 3, giving us another 10% average monarch lifespan. Grab innovative ideas followed by port ideas so that you're able to enable the Toilet Paper Act for 25% average monarch lifespan. Also, if you're a mortal ruler at this point, it does happen to die. He's not going to cause any stability issues, which is good to know, I guess. After which, we need to go ahead and form our end tag because turns out Jerusalem actually isn't an end tag. Very convenient. Persia. There we go. You can feel free to grab new traditions or ambitions or maintain your Crusader route. Oh, and by the way, when you're forming Jerusalem as Venice, make sure you stop being a republic. So you need to reform outer republic because republics aren't allowed to restore Jerusalem. Why? I'm not sure. Anyway, new traditions and ambitions, whatever you want. The reason we're in Persia, again, is for the missions. And what you're looking for are your very unique estates. In this case, we do already start with the Kizilbash. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. The Kizilbash. And what you want to do in your missions is you want to establish the Kurchi. And you also want to create the Tupchi. Excellent naming. But when you establish the Kurchi, you'll be able to give them, as well as the Kurchi, uh, for the, sorry, you'll be able to give the Gilman and the Kizbalash the Kurchi services estate privilege. Now, these three estate privileges are separate. There's three different estate privileges to give out in the um, inside of the Promise Modifiers. And they scale with loyalty. If you get all three, the Kurchi, the Tipchi, and the Kizbalash, to 100% loyalty equilibrium and keep them there, you're going to gain plus 50 average monarch lifespan from each one. Also, you're going to decrease the influence of the other two estates by 50, because if you look at this, for example, one given here by the Kurchi services, they can give to the Kurchi. You're going to decrease the Amir's influence and the Kizbala influence by, well, minus 50 and plus 50 respectively. They're all going to cancel out, where basically every single estate will end up with plus 50 from one and minus 100 from the other two estates. Meaning that you will basically have no influence on these guys, which doesn't really matter because you only ever care about getting their loyalty to set at 100%. That does require quite a bit of work, but once you have them all, all three at 100%, you're able to get 150% average monarch lifespan out of these three. However, that is kind of it in terms of the stacking for the average monarch lifespan. Overall, on average, you will live for an extra 225% longer, but that is well below our initial target of 748.01%. But don't dismay. Even though this is well below our initial target, you can still technically cheat death, but only through extensive burning. Otherwise, enjoy living to an almost 146 years on average, assuming your monarch was of average age when you gained the throne. But that is all I have time for you today. Thank you for all the people that have supported me over at Ko-Fi, with a special thank you to Ark and Solar.